As I turned 23 years old, the time came for me to find a place to live. I started searching for rental options within my budget and found that I could either afford a nice apartment or a small house in the area. While there were plenty of great apartments to choose from, there was something about having a house that appealed to me on a deeper level. After a few months of searching, I finally came across a house that seemed perfect for me. It was a quaint two-story home with a fenced backyard, and most importantly, it fit within my budget. The interior had a slightly outdated look, but it didn't bother me much. On the day of my move-in, I rented a U-Haul early in the morning and filled it with my boxes and a few pieces of furniture. Excitement filled my heart as I drove to my new house. Having previously lived with my parents, I didn't have many belongings to bring along. I had bought some kitchen utensils and prepared myself, but I lacked substantial furniture, except for a bed. When I arrived at my new home around 8 in the morning, the neighborhood appeared quiet and serene. There were no signs of anyone outside, creating a sense of tranquility. My anticipation grew, and I couldn't help but feel a wave of excitement. I stepped out of the car and proceeded to open the garage, ready to unload the boxes and furniture into the living room. It took me about two hours to carry everything back and forth from the truck. Although the task was completed relatively quickly, I had the truck reserved for the entire day, just to be on the safe side. Hence, I decided to leave it parked outside and return it the next morning. Without wasting any time, I immediately began assembling the furniture for my bedroom. I carefully maneuvered each piece of the bed frame up the stairs and into the designated room. After successfully putting it together, I descended the stairs to retrieve my mattress. It was a challenging endeavor, struggling to single-handedly maneuver the large, unwieldy mattress up the steps. However, just as I reached the top of the staircase, a sudden, jarring sound of a door slamming shut echoed through the house, causing me to be startled to the core. My heart raced uncontrollably as I stood there, gripping the mattress on the staircase. For a moment, I froze, trying to comprehend the source of the noise. Hastily, I managed to bring the mattress up the last few steps and then rushed downstairs to investigate. Confusion filled my mind as I surveyed the surroundings, uncertain whether it was a door that had slammed shut, the presence of another person, or perhaps a mere gust of wind inside the house. I was at a loss, unable to determine what had truly transpired. As I roamed downstairs, all I could be certain of was the distinct sound of a door slamming shut. However, upon inspecting the lower level, there was no trace of any unusual occurrences. I mean, absolutely nothing seemed out of place. After spending a perplexing half-hour attempting to unravel the mystery, I eventually relinquished my efforts. There was no evidence to be found, no signs of disruption or anything awry. With a sense of resignation, I ensured that all the doors were securely locked and resumed my task of setting up my room. I diligently assembled my bed, carefully maneuvered my dresser and office desk upstairs, and proceeded to unpack the remaining boxes. By the end of the day, I had completed all the necessary tasks. A surge of pride welled within me, and I eagerly anticipated the following day when I had plans to embark on a couch shopping adventure. At around 10 o'clock, I crawled into bed, spending some time on my phone before succumbing to sleep. When I awoke, my room was cloaked in pitch black darkness, and I found myself facing the wall adjacent to my bed. Initially, my inclination was to close my eyes and drift back into slumber. However, my senses heightened as I heard the unmistakable creaking of the wooden floorboards on the opposite side of the room. I slowly turned my gaze, half expecting to see nothing of concern. Yet, in an instant, my eyes widened in sheer disbelief. To my horror, my bedroom door stood ajar, and a figure stood in the doorway, fixing their gaze upon me. It appeared as if they had been caught mid-stride, causing the floor to emit a haunting creak. In the darkness, their eyes stood out, devoid of emotion and filled with an icy chill, seemingly piercing through my very being. In that most chilling second of my existence, they retreated back into the hallway, grasped the door handle, and forcefully slammed it shut. The sound of their hurried footsteps echoed through the hallway, descending the stairs, and fading into the night as they fled the house. My heart raced, and I felt as though a heart attack was imminent. Summoning every ounce of strength, I compelled myself to rise from my bed and swiftly dialed 911. 
In the following days, the police investigation yielded few answers. They remained perplexed about the identity of the intruder. To shed light on the situation, I reached out to the homeowner from whom I rented the house. According to the homeowner, the previous resident had been forcibly evicted due to non-payment of rent. After several months of no communication, all of their belongings were removed from the property. Curiously, there were minimal records concerning this individual, and they seemingly vanished without a trace. The police corroborated this information, confirming the lack of substantial information about the former tenant. It has been years since that chilling encounter, and I promptly vacated the premises. However, the enigma continues to haunt me. Was the person I witnessed in my room the previous tenant, or could they have been connected to the mysterious disappearance of the former occupant? Regardless, it was evident that this individual harbored a strong aversion towards my presence in that house. The unsettling events that unfolded serve as a constant reminder that I was not wanted there, and the truth behind those haunting moments remains shrouded in uncertainty. At the age of 20, last year in July, I made the bold move of venturing into my first independent living space. It was an apartment building comprising eight units. Among all the available rental options in the market at that time, this particular apartment was the most affordable. While I held a full-time job, my income was limited, and I felt a strong urge to leave my parents' house even though I might not have been fully prepared. On the day of my move, I arranged a futon couch in the living area and mounted my small TV on the wall. That was pretty much the extent of my furnishings. I didn't possess much beyond the bare essentials, as my financial situation didn't permit me to acquire more. The futon served as my makeshift bed, leaving me no choice but to sleep openly in the living space. However, during that very first night, my slumber was abruptly interrupted at 6 a.m. by persistent knocking on my door. Reluctant to stir from my sleep, I glanced over at the door. Yet, realizing that the visitor showed no signs of leaving, I understood that answering the door was inevitable. It was an older man, probably in his mid-forties, standing outside my unit. He simply stood there, fixating his gaze on the door, displaying no intentions of departing. With a mix of curiosity and caution, I mustered the courage to open the door and inquired about his purpose for being there. Eager to make acquaintances, he mentioned that he lived in the unit just one door down from mine, gesturing toward the end of the hallway. Politely, I smiled and expressed gratitude for the introduction, but quickly informed him that I was occupied with other matters and needed to resume my activities. Closing the door behind me, I returned to my spot on the couch. With three consecutive days off from work, all I desired was some uninterrupted rest and the chance to savor the solitude of my new apartment. I drifted back to sleep, only awakening around midday. After taking a refreshing shower, I grabbed my keys and made my way down to the parking lot, intending to fetch some food. As I reversed my car out of the parking space, I noticed someone observing me from a window. Their gaze immediately shifted away as soon as our eyes met, leaving me feeling unsettled. I counted the windows, ascending to the third story, which happened to be the same floor as mine. Considering that there were two units per floor, it dawned on me that the person watching me might be the same man who had visited earlier in the morning. The encounter left me with an odd sensation, but I proceeded to drive off and retrieve my meal. Upon returning to my apartment, I sat down to eat while enjoying some television. The remainder of the day was spent lounging on the couch, and I stayed awake until 11 pm when drowsiness began to overtake me. As I switched off all the lights and settled onto the futon, something caught my attention. A faint red light emanated from the kitchen, its intermittent blinking proving to be a source of annoyance. Determined to identify its origin, I got up and ventured into the kitchen, suspecting it to be emanating from the dishwasher or microwave. However, to my surprise, neither of them had any illuminated indicators. I meticulously examined each appliance, only for the light to suddenly blink off and remain extinguished. 
Exhaustion had overwhelmed me to the point where I didn't give it much thought until the following morning. With all the lights illuminating the surroundings, I conducted another swift search, and to my astonishment, I made a discovery. There was a small object wedged between the refrigerator and the wall. Carefully, I shifted the fridge and retrieved it. It turned out to be a camera, a minute device, but undoubtedly a camera of some sort. Staring at the tiny device, I remained in a daze for a couple of minutes until a knock at the door interrupted my thoughts. Peering through the peephole, I recognized the face of the older man from the previous encounter. Proceeding with caution, I opened the door partially. The man claimed he was merely checking in on me, but his demeanor exuded nervousness. His peculiar smile and unsettling presence struck me as off-kilter. As he took a step closer, I reassured him that I was fine but preoccupied with tasks for the day. Silence fell upon us as he stood there, his expression bearing an odd and uncomfortable air. An anticipation crept up within me, an ominous feeling that he was on the verge of doing something untoward. Suddenly, he forcefully propelled himself toward the door, attempting to gain entry. Fortunately, I summoned my strength and pushed the door against him, effectively keeping him out. With determination, I swiftly closed and locked the door, securing my safety within the confines of my apartment. Without hesitation, I dialed the police, and in a matter of 10 minutes, the man found himself in handcuffs. As I presented the camera I had discovered, he readily confessed to his actions, offering no resistance. However, upon conducting a thorough investigation, the authorities uncovered cameras installed in three other units. It appeared that by admitting to the camera in my unit, he aimed to establish a false sense of trust, hoping they would overlook the need to probe further into the neighboring dwellings. I understand that this twisted individual was likely just a sick voyeur who may not have posed an immediate physical threat to me. Nevertheless, the entire ordeal left me with the most peculiar and disconcerting sensation I had ever experienced. Last fall, I moved to Portland because of work, even though I didn't really have a choice. The houses in Portland are really expensive, so I had to find something outside the city. The house I found was on the rundown side. If you just took a quick look, you might think it was empty. But it was affordable, and I thought I could fix it up and make it better. The neighborhood, though, was not great. There were other houses like mine, and some really sketchy looking people around. These guys were walking around with torn tank tops and guns visible in their pants. When I first checked out the house, I knew the neighborhood wasn't perfect. But I didn't expect to find these kinds of people here. I thought it would be regular folks like me who couldn't afford nicer places. About two weeks after moving in, I was taking a walk with my dog around the block. That's when I noticed a group of guys walking behind me. They were trailing behind, not too close but close enough to raise suspicion. I glanced back several times and noticed three men, none of whom seemed like they were out for a leisurely evening stroll. To avoid any potential confrontations, I decided to take a shortcut home. But just a few minutes later, my dog started barking uncontrollably at the front door. Curiosity compelled me to peer through the blinds, and to my surprise, I spotted one of the men standing right at my doorstep. I quickly scanned the surroundings, but there was no sign of the others. With caution, I secured the chain latch on the door and cracked it open slightly. Can I help you? I asked, my voice tinged with uncertainty. The man confidently replied, yeah, I'm looking for Chris, assuming I would know exactly who this Chris person was. Startled, I responded, I don't know any Chris. I just moved here. Through the narrow opening, I noticed the man stealing glances inside my house. He bid me farewell with an air of eeriness and departed. Something felt off, but I couldn't quite put my finger on it. Over the next few days, I couldn't help but notice the same trio of men lingering near my house, often at different times and from a distance. They would stand across the street or casually pass by, 
blatantly directing their attention toward my residence. Fear gripped me, and the thought of calling the police left me uncertain of what to say or if they could even help. Then, one fateful night around 9 p.m., a knock echoed through my door. Peering cautiously through the peephole, I realized it wasn't any of the men I had seen before. Ignoring the persistent knocking, I hoped the stranger would eventually give up and leave. As I observed him turning around, frustration evident in his gestures, it seemed as though he was signaling someone across the street about my lack of response. He abruptly faced the door again, pounding on it with the handle of his gun. Panic surged through me as I darted to the kitchen, retrieving my own handgun from its concealed case. Meanwhile, I could hear the muffled voices of several men conversing near the side of my house, followed by heavy banging on my back door. Seeking refuge in the far corner of the living room, I dialed the emergency line, my trembling fingers struggling to operate the phone. Outside, the men grew increasingly agitated, their voices raised in heated arguments as they deliberated on how to gain entry. The tension in the air was suffocating, amplifying the terror of the situation. Then, unexpectedly, a single gunshot pierced the silence, originating from a distance far removed from the menacing presence surrounding my home. The echoes of their frantic shouts and hasty retreat filled the air. It felt like an eternity before the police finally arrived, but their response left much to be desired. Merely dismissing the incident as a territorial display by a gang, they offered no substantial assistance or information. The identity of the individual who fired the gunshot remains a mystery. However, their actions seem to be aimed at protecting me, and for that, I am immensely grateful. Who knows what horrors they intended to inflict had they succeeded in breaking in. As soon as the opportunity arose, I swiftly relocated from that neighborhood, securing a small apartment closer to the city. While this new environment provides a sense of security, the lingering aftermath of that ordeal casts a shadow over my ability to ever truly feel safe in my current residence.